Claire Broyles was the postmistress in Farmington for many years. And then when she retired, her husband, Russell Broyles, became the postmaster. And um, they just, uh, they were uh, members of the Methodist Church in Farmington on White Street. They lived across the, they lived across the street from the church. Um, if you lived in Farmington, you knew Clara Broyles. And you knew Russell Broyles, and they knew you. And I'm going to read a piece that my sister Wanda Sue Smith Allen wrote about Clara Montgomery Broyles, who was born in 1907 and died in 1997. This is a history given by Norma Jane Broyles Noble, a niece of Russell and Clara Broyles, to my sister Wanda Sue Allen, August the 9th, 2005. Russell and Clara Broyles had no children, and Russell preceded Clara in death. When Clara died and her will was probated, it became known that the Farmington United Methodist Church was beneficiary of a bequest in the amount of $100,000. That money made it possible for our church to purchase 10 acres of land at the corner of South Winds Road and Highway 170. We had for a while been aware that in order for our church to accommodate the growing congregation, we would need to relocate from the site where we had been for a hundred years plus. Clara Montgomery was born in a community called Old Alabama in Madison County, Arkansas. She had a sister, Leela, a year younger than her, and a brother named Wayne, about five years younger than her. There was no school in the community, so when Clara reached six years old, her family moved to Hinesville, so where Clara and her siblings attended a school which held classes for grades one through eight. Clara repeated the eighth grade simply because the school did not offer classes above eighth grade. The next year, Clara was able to go to Huntsville and board with a family there so she could attend high school. It is believed that the high school there had some connection to a Presbyterian mission at an earlier time, around 1910. In the years after Clara finished high school, she came to Fedville and lived in a boarding house and attended classes at the University of Arkansas for two or three years. During this time, she became acquainted with a Farmington boy named Russell Broyles. He was quite smitten with her and took every opportunity to see her and would spend time sitting with her in a porch swing on the boarding house porch at the corner of Mountain and School Streets in Fedville. Russell lived with his parents in what is now known as the Old Kenny Brew Home on the corner of Main Street and Ray's Mill Road. The Kenny Brews were his maternal grandparents. Russell had been anxious to get Clara a nice Christmas present, so he got a job being the Santa Claus at the Campbellbell department store on the west side of the square in Fedville. He was then able to buy Clara a little white radio, which was a grand present at the time. Her friends at the university would gather regularly at her boarding house to hear it. With the depression gaining hold of the nation's economy, Clara was no longer able to attend college. After she finished two or three years at the University of Arkansas, Clara took the county teacher's test, passed it, and was licensed to, licensed to teach elementary grades. She got a job at a small community east of Fedville, and as was the custom at that time, boarded with the family and the community. She was able to go home to see Russell on occasional weekends. Consequently, she was not very happy, but she did finish out the school year there. It was 1934 and she and Russell were married, moved to Farmington and lived with his parents. Although Russell's parents had farming interests, times were hard. Clara got a job teaching in the elementary grades at Farmington and was there for several years. She had hoped to return the, to the university to get her degree, but it didn't work out, so she continued to teach for a few years. Russell had opened a grocery store on Main Street and operated it for several years. When an opening for Postmaster became available in Farmington, Clara applied for it and was appointed 
postmistress. The post office was located in the front room of a house on the north side of the street across from McNeil's store. Russell and Clara fixed up an apartment in the rear of the house and lived there for several years. They then bought the large house across the street from the Methodist Church on White Street and lived there for a few years. They decided to build a new home directly west of the large house and moved there in the 1950s. They remained there the rest of their lives all the while working at the post office. Clara's sister, Leela, had married Dr. Otwell, an optometrist in Fedville, and lived there. Her brother, Wayne Montgomery, had lived and worked in California during World War II. Clara's parents had become quite elderly by then, and she persuaded them to move from Hinesville area to the big house which Russell and Clara still owned. Brother Wayne Montgomery was seriously injured in a car accident in California and returned here and lived with his parents in the two-story home later to be known as the Montgomery House. Russell worked with Clara at the post office during these years and at her retirement with himself appointed postmaster. After Wayne had recovered from the car accident injuries, he worked with Russell in the post office. When Russell retired, a new poster, Raymond C. Buddy Elkins, was appointed postmaster. He had been employed at the Federal Post Office for many years, lived in the Farmington area, and was a member of the Farmington Methodist Church. Wayne Montgomery continued to work at the post office. There was a time when the U.S. Postal Department talked of closing and the Farmington Post Office the U.S. Postal Department talked of closing the Farmington Post Office, but it was saved from closure by the Ozark Mountain Smokehouse. The Ozark Mountain Smokehouse began to do all their mailing of custom-cured meat products from Farmington, and the mail volume became such that the post office remained open. Of course, the townspeople themselves expressed vigorous opposition to the pr proposal. Another employee, Amy Wells, was eventually hired at the post office. She was a local resident who was also a member of the Methodist Church. Russell and Clara Broyles were quite good about business matters and were considered to be well fixed by the community at large. They were very active in the Methodist Church. They attended church faithfully and took part in all aspects of its operation and activities. Clara had the misfortune to fall and break her hip at a later time. Although she could not attend church with regularity after that, Russell did. I remember well one service one Sunday service at church when the announcements were being made that Russell stood up and announced that he wanted to present the church a check for $10,000 he was holding. He explained that it was the amount of money he had received from his Kennebrew grandparents after they died. Russell's health deteriorated sometime after that, and he died at Washington Regional Medical Center soon after daylight on Sunday, September 22, 1991. A strange thing happened the night before. I had called the hospital to talk with an acquaintance of mine, and the operator by error connected me to the wrong room. Russell Broyles answered, and I said, Russell, is that you? And he said, yes. I had not known he was in the hospital and asked what he was doing there. His voice was weak, and he told me he didn't think he was going to make it. We talked a bit, and I tried to encourage him. The next morning, as we gathered at the Methodist Church to begin service, Pastor Vondale Mooney told us from the pulpit that our longtime member, Russell, Russell Broyles, had died early that morning at Washington Regional Medical Center. At the exact time that Pastor Mooney finished the sentence, the light bulb on the east side of the church nearest to the second front short pew suddenly went dark. This was the pew that Russell had sat in, and the pew that his grandfather, John Kennebrew, had sat in during his lifetime. There was quiet for a minute, then the service went on. Clara continued to live in their home, but did not try to go out much after that. She died at Federal City Hospital on March 16, 1997. She and Russell did not have children. They did, have, they did have quite a few nieces and nephews that benefited from their estates. Clara not only left our church $100,000, she also left money to three other churches in Farmington and a sizable amount to the Farmington schools. Her sister, Leela Otwell, did not have children, and so she left money to the school system. 
Their brother, Wayne Montgomery, did not have children, and he left money to the school. There are various scholarships in all three of their names that are provided yearly to graduates of our school system from the trusts established by their bequests. I believe Russell and Claire also left money to the local fire department, police department, cemetery association, and perhaps others. A poignant remembrance of Clara and Russell was that as young people growing up in Farmington and surrounding area, when any of us would go out of town for any reason and send postcards to our friends or relatives here, we would always write in little letters after the closing, Hi, Clara and Russell. They were always pleased to hear. My sister Susie wrote that in parentheses. Compiled and written by Wanda Sue, Susie Smith Allen, age 74, lifelong resident of the Farmington area. Edited by Sister Susie Martha DeBall.